Welcome to the College Audition Podcast with your host, nationally renowned college audition coach, Tim Evanicki. Hey everybody, Tim Evanicki here with the College Audition, back again with another episode of the College Audition Podcast. Here today with my special guest, Mr. Jacob Brent, music, musical theater coordinator at James Madison University. Welcome, Jacob. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Tim. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited that you've started a podcast. This is awesome. I love podcasts, so... I'm oh, like, thank you. This is like dream for me, to be That's honest. That's so nice to hear because I have no idea what I'm doing. This is like our 20th episode and I still fly by the seat of my pants, so I hope everyone's enjoying what they're hearing from us. Of course they are. There's no rules. It's a podcast. Of course. So, Jacob, we always start um, learning about the, the, the person before the program. So I want to hear all about your illustrious career before um, your time at James Madison. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, um, I was born. No, I'm kidding. Um, uh, uh, I, I, I'm most well known as playing Mr. Mistopheles and the Broadway company of Cats. I was there for 10 years. Um, I also did the 1998, I can't believe it's been that long, um, uh, production that was uh, shot for DVD. So I, I did that. And then I also did the West End production of the show. So, um, that's what I did. And um, I was in New York for 20 years. Uh, I did some, you know, workshops, workshops of shows and and um, got to study with some incredible people and, and had a great career and um, very fortunate to do that. And then I just decided to um, go into teaching. And so I kind of transitioned out of New York into this world that I'm in now. So, so share with us. That. Just because I love hearing this story, um, share with us the unorthodox way that you uh, were actually originally cast in Cats. It, uh, it's something that probably would not work today, and I would not suggest to any of our listeners out there. But oh. why don't you tell that story? Oh, I know. The, okay, that story. Um, yeah, so um, I was doing a show. My first job was... Um, I'll rewind a little bit. My first job was at Walt Disney World. I was hired there. Um, and I went there and worked and danced for the mouse and loved it. And highly suggest anyone starting off, you know, theme parks sometimes get a bad rap. And I just want to give a little plug to that saying it was awesome. I made the most money I've ever made in my life at that time. Um, and I thought I was on top of the world. So it was great. Um, and from there, I went to uh, Starlight Express. I got hired for Starlight Express, another Andrew Lloyd Webber show in Vegas. I opened that production. And um, I left, and I knew it, I still wanted to go to New York. And um, I went to New York, and I actually called Tara Rubin. Um, and she had just started her casting. She had just taken over for Vinnie Liff. And that casting agency. And um, I didn't know you weren't supposed to call. So I just picked up the phone and called her. And I said, hey, I'm perfect for the show. I just did Starlight Express. And um, I I would love to be seen. Like, let me know when uh, an audition is happening. And she's like, she asked me how tall I was. And I told her. And she said, great, can you come in on Thursday? And so I did. And um, it was one of those old school uh, auditions that I don't even know happen anymore. Like, they're on the stage of the Winter Garden. So... Here you are. There was like eight of us on the stage. It was a, pri I guess, private audition. I didn't even know. I, at the time, I didn't even know what open call was, right? So um, uh, uh, so we there, and I, we just kept dancing and dancing and singing and singing. And um, I at the end of the day, I was, it was, I was the last one standing. So I was, and I was the first hire of um, Tara Rubin. I was the first person she ever hired on her, like, uh, on her own without um, being an associate with um, Vinnie Lift. So, wow. yeah, so that's how I got it. So it's kind of crazy. And <laughs> and I think there was a part of, like, the, I was just naive enough to to not know enough to, to know, like, one, I shouldn't have done that, probably. I don't suggest calling Tara Rubin up and being like, I'm perfect for the show. Um, and uh, I just had fun. I just kept having fun the whole day. Um, I, I just kept getting kept and, and we kept singing and dancing and I was like, well, this, I know how to do all this. This is easy. Like, and I just, I think there was a part of me that, that, that energy that was just having fun at doing it that came across. And so instead of that desperation, um, energy that people have sometimes, and I've definitely had that energy in an audition as well. So I think that's what, one of the reasons that I just kept um, they like they were responding to me and kept me there. So, um, yeah, it was cool. Wow, 
So basically, if you want to avoid open calls in New York City, just call the casting director yeah. right up and say, hey, I'm perfect for the show. Oh, my God. The ca- people are currently emailing me being like, what are you saying? Stop saying this information. <laughs> I'm like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. But I think do go in with a sense of fun, right? Like, it was a great day, and, and you are, um, you know, it, and just be com- like, and everyone says be confident, but like, I was ready, you know. I knew my skill. I knew what I was good at, and I and I just shared it. And I think that was one of the things that set me apart that day. There you go. Now there's a lesson you actually can't take away from it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, you decided then, after your time was over in New York, that you wanted to move into the teaching side of things. So where did that take you first? Yeah, that first took me to Ryder University. Um, my friend Robin there, um, who runs that program, had, I think, broke his foot or leg or something, and um, he was not able to teach that semester, and so he asked me to come and fill in for him, and I really, really enjoyed it. I thought, oh, this is it. This is what I want to do. I had been in New York teaching classes at Broadway Dance Center and Steps, and um, uh, I had been, you know, doing master classes and stuff like that, but that that sense of being able to take to see that student three times a week, right, or every day in some other class, or and and have that um, time with them to really see growth and really, you know, it's just different than teaching open classes in New York, right? It's mm-hmm. just a different kind of thing, and I and I enjoy teaching open classes in New York, but this this being able to really like be a part of someone's journey. Um, was very important to me. And my my teacher growing up, um, one of my teachers that had a huge impact on me said to me one time, you know, like this this art form is a passed down art form. Um, and so it is important for us to pass it on. I have ha- I've had great opportunity to hold hands with people uh, generations above me um, who really, reached out their hand and grabbed mine and pulled me along. And so I think it's, and, and that's what, and that's how this works, right? So now it is my turn to turn around and grab somebody's hand and pull them up and bring them into this next generation of musical theater performers. So oh, that's, that's why I'm here. Oh, that's lovely. So Ryder, then where to next? Ryder, and then I went to grad school at San Diego State University. Awesome grad school. Um, I went out there and, uh, because I really, I wanted to do it, but I also knew, like, I needed a piece of paper um, that said, you know, someone said, yes, you can teach. Um, I didn't want to go, I didn't want to do, like, try to prove my, and I also come from, um, both my parents are in higher education. So um, I came from this world. So I knew the that I would need some sort of a terminal degree if I really wanted to do this. So I pulled over on the side of the road, not literally, but figuratively, and um, <laughs> went to San Diego, moved out there for two years, um, and just kind of, for myself, went off the market and, like, really dove into learning how to teach this stuff. So, um, yeah, so that's what I did. And then I went to Shenandoah University, and I worked there for a couple of years, and then I um, was offered this position here to run this musical theater program here. So awesome. I moved here. Oh, good. Now, did you apply for this position, or did you just call him up and tell him you were perfect for it? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, they actually called me, so, okay. so that was good. That was good. They called oh, me good. and said, we think you're perfect for it. Please apply. So, um, Oh, great. It was good. Yeah. So as I introduced you, you are the music musical theater coordinator, um, and so that's not a term that, that people listening have been hearing with my other guests. They've been hearing the word chair or director. Um, so you're still basically in charge. You're, you're yes. So if, 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 yes, if, if you want to equate it to, every, I'm the head of musical theater here. We just, at JMU, we don't use that vocabulary. We have different vocabulary and, and everyone's a coordinator of their, like we have a theater coordinator, musical theater coordinator. And, um, yeah, we have like area unit heads and that would be a chair. Um, we do have deans. Um, it's just a different structure, it, but it means the same thing. So. Yes. I will be at auditions. I run the auditions. I accept people. You hear from me. Um, All those good things. You're the big guy. Great. 
Kind so, of. <laughs> so other than um, your position there running the program, what is it that you actually teach? When will the students get an opportunity mm. to work with you during their four years? Yeah, I teach um, – I, in the first year, I teach the freshmen. So either I'll teach them in the first semester or the second semester. We alternate that. Um, I teach a musical theater styles dance class, um, which I teach – in the junior year, junior and senior year, um, and I teach musical theater history and the to the sophomores, and then I teach um, and then I do the senior showcase and with the seniors. So I get to touch, um, you know, them um, throughout their four years. I, you, um, yeah. Great. So, so I see them all, and then I and I'm advisor to most of them. Um, we have two people that we split the advising up. And so um, I check in with them periodically throughout. Even if they're not in a class with me, they would they would still be come by the office and non COVID times, which should be back. Gosh, I hope it's over soon. Hopefully, I know, I know. better by the time people are listening to this. Hopefully, yeah, um, yeah. So I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit as we transition into speaking about the program. Okay. Um, uh, I ask everyone to give me their elevator speech on. Um, their program. Just describe your program to us in 60 seconds or less. Oh my gosh. Ready? Go. Um, we <laughs> are a professional-based um, Bachelor of Arts program uh, and in musical theater. And um, oh my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh, you're really putting me on the spot. I it's am. been a while. It's been a moment since I've given this. So I, I have know. to like <laughs> look at it. Um, we're really interested in people that are um, want a uh, a lifetime in this uh, industry. So I'm interested in training. I can train somebody to get a show, um, to make it into a show, but I'm really interested in training someone that's going to get into the third, fourth, and fifth show and have a lifelong career in this business. Well, great. So you just mentioned it's a BA in musical theater. There aren't too many of those out there. So um, I know I've asked you to do this several times with my students, but just explain to us what that difference is. Because I think most kids go into this saying, BFA, I want a BFA, I want a BFA. Um, but you have a BA. Right. So what does that mean? Right. So it's a Bachelor of Arts. So um, it means, well, it's, it means different things in, at different places, right? And so I, I think it does have a little bit of a bad rap. Um uh, but I can hopefully hopefully talk a little bit about it and and change maybe or open up people's minds to it a little bit. Um, it, we are if we are. Let me ha let me figure out how I want to start this. So I I think the best thing to do is like the industry is changing and the industry has changed basically I think, and so what I constantly hear from are people that are wanting actors performers that are well-rounded we hear that a lot well-rounded people um and that is what we kind of do that's what's our thing so um we are really a program for someone who wants to uh double major add a minor um it's really important for i think it's important for people to um be able to explore things and this is that time in their life that 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 uh you we get that gift we get that gift of time to be able to to go and take other classes i think it's so important especially right now when we're talking about like mental health and training and that to be able to do something else besides work on text all the time so it's I'm, and I'm not dissing BFA programs. I think they're they're awesome. There's some really great ones, and um, it it's just I, I think we have an option. There's an mm -hmm. option here, so that um, you know we're not we're not focusing so much on text, whether it's reading a, in a play or a musical or in a song. Like you're not you're not just solely for four years focusing on that. You're going and you're taking astronomy. You're taking a business class. You're not not a show business business of class, like a real business class, right? Like, um, uh, and you're you're able to investigate those things and then bring that information into your work, which is going to give you that well roundedness that everybody is wanting. So it's just I feel like, um, and and on top of that, 
you're going to sing and dance and I'm going to make you do all the things that everybody else is going to make you do. So it's just this, um, I think there's this great like sort of accordion uh, fluidness to the program that is able to, we're, we're able to, to um, uh, adjust to each student a little bit more than a than so much more of a rigid skills based BFA. You have to take these classes in this sequence. Um, this is the product that we make at this school, and you have to fit in this box to be this product. And that's awesome for some people, but a lot of people don't fit in that box or, or that product. And so they're constantly thinking they need that BFA, but they're constantly in that school fighting who they are. And I think it's so important. Now, We the business wants people that, that are coming in with a point of view and know who they are. Mm -hmm. And that's who, that's who people want auditioning for them. Someone that walks into the room, they know who they are, and they have a point of view and they're sharing that. And I so, think that we, we help you find that. Yeah. So for the students who are listening that aren't one of my kids or that might not know this, the difference between a BFA and a BA is just how your credit hours are broken down basically. So in a BA, um, what, what you're sort of explaining here, Jacob, is that um, you have more gen ed classes woven into the curriculum so that they will have more opportunity with their, um, with their class choices to pick some things outside of musical theater uh, as well. But yeah. you, you've said, um, I've heard you say in the past that you're just a few credits shy of being an actual BFA program because there's so much singing, dancing, and acting built into your BA program. Is that true? That is true. And that's why I think that you really have to look at, you have to look at the BA program because there are some that are like, you take like three classes or four classes and you get a BA in musical theater. We are definitely not that. We, you, you are singing and dancing and acting every semester. Um, we, yeah, we look a lot like a BFA program, but we're. So talk to us a little bit about what other opportunities there are to minor or even double major within the performing arts there because i know you said and, and and a double major is also something that is a, a taboo or a no-no with bfa programs that you're able to do with a ba because the gen eds can be shared by both degrees but um talk about some other you know performing arts opportunities if they want to expand their degree that way yeah and performing and, and the performing arts a lot of people minor in dance um uh, so that, that's a very popular one to major in musical theater, and minor in dance that just opens up a little bit more dance, um, classes that you're able to take, um, and also take more like choreography classes and things like that, that I'm finding a lot of students are coming in interested in, which I love, which is awesome. Um, uh, but we have people that double major in, in, in languages, uh, and business and, um, many many different things so it it really is open like really the only thing that it's really hard to double major in here is nursing and um early education um so it's hard to be a kindergarten teacher and a musical theater performer um but um or a nurse but i've never met a nurse and a musical theater performer so um <laughs> <laughs> there might be I'm sure there's very talented nurses out there but um, yeah so that's the only those are the two that are really difficult we also have a huge like study abroad program that is a big question for people and we we I really um, encourage that I think it's great I've had opportunity to study um, abroad several times and work abroad and and I just think that like going there and experiencing immersing yourself in a different culture and country is like it's, it's it's you just come back and you have so much more to put into your work and people are they're always afraid like oh i'm gonna miss like you know four months of voice lessons you're not gonna lose that much right. you know but you're what you come back with you're gonna gain and you're gonna just like knock it out of the park so much quicker and um because you're just going to be a different person right. when you come back from those experiences. So let's dive into this curriculum even more. So here I am, um, a freshman at James Madison University. What does my first year look like? What am I taking? Ah, you're going to take basic acting. Mm -hmm. You're going to take uh, a dance class. We do level here. Um, 
Uh, we level you, um, so we don't we don't make all the freshmen take eight a.m. ballet. Um, we we put you in a a, a class that's going to be right for you because I just feel like I I. I, I feel like that's just better to it's everyone learns better right than the people that have danced since they were three are not in a class with someone who has never danced maybe or a few years of cl of classes and then that person's just intimidated and they don't want to you know learn so it's it's just better to level them um we do that you take a dance class you take um 171 so what a performance analysis class um then that's just how to like you know study look at a performance and and be able to talk about it and in a sort of more educated way than like it was neat i liked it <laughs> costumes were great um uh that and um uh, you take a voice lesson sorry and a voice lesson and that's sort of it uh, in terms of uh the um your majors classes and then you'll take um English, English and writing, and we like to get those things done. Mm -hmm. We also have a practicum credits here, so everybody will work in the scene shop, uh, in the costume shop, or lighting at some point. And so we like to start those Great. as soon as possible. So you could do, you could be in a practicum your first year. Um, one of the big questions that might come up, I'm just going down the list now. Now you've got me in recruitment mode, so um, I'm doing the doing the talk. Um, our freshmen are allowed to audition as soon as they step on campus. So we don't here we don't make them wait a year before they can audition for shows. Oh, great, great. And um, <clears throat> what are some other highlights? I won't make you go year by year, but some other highlights of classes and things they take as they go sophomore, junior, senior. Oh yeah, so um, history class, which I love because I'm a, the biggest musical theater nerd, so I like that um, history. Um, then we do uh, like a acting through song class. Um, we're really analyzing text and structure of stuff, and then um, advanced musical theater, which is is a um, like scene study. It's going to be a musical theater scene study class. Um, and then we do um, an auditioning class. Um, this year was taught by Kate Lumpkin, who is a um, casting director. She was able to teach that. Um, be because everything's online, it was awesome for her to be in New York and, and be able to teach that class. So it was awesome that the students got to learn how to audition from a New York casting director. Um, uh, that, and then we do a showcase. Um, that's not really a, an official class, but we well let's talk really about your senior things. showcase a little bit how is that structured um it's well i can say how it was in the past we're really looking at how to redo it um i think that the i think the whole showcase thing the model is changing um with this we did a um a virtual showcase this year which proved to be really um positive and a lot of people got um responses from it which was which was really cool um, uh, we usually do one in New York and we do one in DC because we're so close to DC. We're like two hours outside of DC. And so a lot of our students find that, that they can start in that market um, really quickly out right outside of, right after college. So we like to just open that up for them um, as an option to go to DC to maybe do their first job or, you know, mm -hmm. some people want to stay there because they love it, but it's a great way to, to get you know, get in the biz and, and work with some people and then go to New York. Sure. Um, so we do that. And then we also do a 54 below like um, celebration with our seniors. And um, uh, we invite alumni to come back and sing um, songs with them. And um, it's a great just alumni celebration that we great. do. So that, that's what we do with that. So you mentioned. And everybody is, um, everybody, everybody showcases. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, some people I know there's uh, you have to audition to be in the showcase. We don't do that. Uh, if you're accepted in the program, you get to showcase. Great. So you mentioned that uh, freshmen are allowed to audition from the moment they're on campus, um, which some people would be really glad to hear. Um, what do you what do you produce every year as far as plays and musicals for musical theaters? We do five different shows a year. Um, Three of those are going to be straight plays. Uh, musical theater majors are allowed to be in the play. Um, and we do two musicals, a fall musical and a spring musical. Awesome. Um, those are the main stages. In addition to that, we do about four student productions a year. 
Um, and we, we structure that a little differently than other places, I think. Um, we actually give you, uh, we have a, an incredible black box here. So we, um, we hand that over to the students. They get time. They get rehearsal space. Um, they get a little bit of a budget. And we let them, um, and they get a faculty advisor. And we let them play and come up and create something. So, um, and they have to submit it. And there's a whole there's a whole process that goes through. But we were finding that they were doing it. Any students wanted to do it anyway, and they were doing it like on their free time or doing it at two o'clock in the morning, trying to rehearse. And we just decided that was not healthy. And we said this is important. So we made it really. We made space for that to happen. So um, we did about two of those each semester. Um, and then we also have like. Um, you know, in their sophomore year and their studio and your lab class, um, musical theater lab will have a final showing. It's not a like a showcase, but like, a, you know, a little final showing sure. and stuff like that. So we we have um, opportunities to perform throughout the the year, little smaller little things. But but the big things are the two musicals and the student shows. Awesome. Um, any uh, success stories, notable alum or faculty you want to share with us? Um, yeah, sure. Um, Jacob Dickey was just, uh, he was, uh, he was Aladdin and Aladdin. Um, we got some kids of that. Um, oh gosh, Kevin Quillen is on his like 11th Broadway show, I think. Um, Rachel Shore is, um, she just opened, um, she just transitioned awesome into this, uh, uh, like PR firm, um, her own firm. Uh, during COVID, but she's also like the the Roxy girl in between. I call her the Roxy girl in between the um, the celebs of the moment that come in to do Roxy. And if if there's a you know a week that uh, somebody can't be in, she goes in for them. So it's so yeah, we have like we got some people up in the up in the up on the Broadway working. <laughs> I've um, heard of this place, the Broadway. The Broadway, I know. Yeah, it's kind of cool. <laughs> so you mentioned you're really close to DC. Um, so tell us a little bit about the area um, that the that the college is in. Where is James Madison University, and what are some community yeah. things that students can do if they ever decide that they actually want to leave campus? Oh yeah, we mm -hmm. are in Harrisonburg, Virginia, which is two hours from DC's and two hours from Richmond. Um, we're in between um, mountains, so we're in the valley, and it's stunningly beautiful. Uh, if you're into like hiking and all that kind of stuff, it's great. We are a huge university, or, or a, a large university. We're not there's there's bigger ones, but we're 22,000 students. Um, we are definitely a college town. You're five minutes away from downtown. Lots of places to walk to um, if you don't have a car uh, and eat and those kind of things and shops. And we got our little downtown looks like um, Back to the Future. So if you um, that like there's like a little square and there's like a big clock tower building and it looks like yeah it looks like Marty McFly is gonna like <laughs> come in at any point. Um, but we are definitely the town is run sort of by the university a little bit. Like it is a college. It's it's a college town, um, and there's um, college bars and and everything. It's a little sleepy right now because everyone's gone because um, it's summer. But um, it's it's really it's really cool. It's really nice. fun. And like we you know we go to football games and we tailgate and we do a little. We have a musical theater tent and people come by. They might not go to the game, but we. Um, but a lot of a lot of our students go to the games. Like they they want that, also like college life. So we, that that's important, right? Not just to. So we do a little setup for them and tailgate and that. Kind I of would stuff. just hang out in the musical theater tent. That sounds way more fun to me. That's I mean that's what it is. <laughs> I, I, I I rarely go in and listen. I mean we have the game on the radio and stuff, but we or you can hear it, but. You mentioned that you do a showcase in D.C. as well, um, which must mean that the D.C. theater scene is active and vibrant and there's lots of work there. And I actually don't know much about that myself. I was surprised to hear that. So can you talk a little bit to that? If you know if you're if a lot of your students are using D.C. as a stepping stone, like what what are the opportunities there? Yeah, there's a lot. Um, the biggest one is Signature uh, or for us, I think. Um, and we have a lot of alums that like work in the theater so I, there's just 
JMU just has a really good reputation there. I think that they under, they know what it is. Um, so yeah, um, we've had that's the one that I'm most familiar with. I know there's others, um, but I know that the signatures are is sort of a big one that we mm-hmm. work with. That's so. right. Yeah, there's like three or four big, big, big theaters there. So hmm. um, I had no idea. Yeah. I knew that there, you know, were the big touring houses, and 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 I knew a signature. I just didn't know much else. So I learned something today. Thank you, Mr. Brent. Um, You're welcome. We also have a, a relationship with Virginia Rep and Richmond, um, and that's a good place to to the, a lot of people um, start there too, oh, or, or go there to do a show. Awesome. So, so it's nice. It's nice to have this sort of like, um, uh, it's not, we don't really have an official um, relationship, but we, but we have this unofficial relationship that we have with both places. Awesome. Um, let's talk a little bit about auditioning for JMU. Mm-hmm. Um, so do you pre-screen? We do not pre-screen. We like see everybody. Great. That we make room for everybody. Good. So. How many applicants did you see this past year? This past year with about 350. And did you think that that was that a boost from the year before? How was it? How did COVID affect it? Yeah, uh, I w- it definitely boosted. I would love to talk to probably uh, your other guest about this too, because um, we saw an uptick of about 100 people. Like it's usually, we were usually around 250 and this year we had 350. So I think, I don't, I don't know if it's the word getting out about our our program or people want to, I mean, I think that's some of it, but I also think that it's, it was easier and more accessible to audition for places mm-hmm. because you didn't have to travel. Yeah. I think that had a lot to do with it. Um, and you know, I, I think well, that yeah. it, for the most part, the schools have, have been saying that there wasn't a huge increase this year. Um, so I think you could probably say that it's because your, your program is really growing and, and gaining traction. Um, well, you're sweet. I mean, you're sweet. And I think it's people like you who invite me to come teach for them. And then people learn about our program. Well, so, you know, thank you. when I first started doing this, you know, I was the one saying, hey, have you thought about JMU? And now students are coming to me with their lists with JMU already on their list. So that that's a great that's a great sign. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I think I think it's the program. And, and they're think they're like, oh, yeah. It, when people talk to me sometimes and explain what I say, what kind of program are you looking for? They kind of. It's, they kind of say, they describe JMU back to mm-hmm. me, and I'm like, oh, this is this is your program. Lots of kids want minors and double majors, and and you know, there's minors are a normal mm-hmm. opportunity at most places, but double majors aren't. So, if uh, I've sent a lot of kids your way just for that yeah. very reason, so I mean, it's not easy. I will say that. I mean, double majoring is not oh, easy. No. It takes a certain student that's got you know that has the you know, but but it's possible. So, so how many are you aiming for for your incoming class each year we aim for about 14 and uh we have 17 coming this year oh well good um yeah so yeah there was just a couple that i just could i i was like i can't say no i want to work with yeah i can't say no to this how uh, you're asking me to pick no and um of course the university always likes when we over enroll of course so (laughs) <laughs> so, um, a student is coming in for a, a JMU audition. Who? What are you looking for? What do you? What makes a student stand out to you? Yeah, I'm looking for. You know, it's that thing that you can't really teach, right? And and it's that um, I don't need you to be amazing at everything. Um, because why were you coming to school? Like, you, you know, you've got to, but um, I need, there needs to be a, like a base level skill set, you know, that you have. And then I'm interested in what do you, what do you want out of this? You know, what, um, what do you, what do you want? Um, it's not really what I can make you. It's like, what do you want? And, and then do we match up and, it's finding that interesting, something interesting about that student. And that's different for everybody. There's not what, there's no formula that I'm looking for. So that triple threat buzzword is not important to you. Um, you know, it, <laughs> uh, 
Yes, yes and no. Like, I mean, there's students that come to us and have never taken a dance class before. But, you know, I they we put them through the little, you know, our audition. And, and if they have, I can see it in them and see, like, do they have rhythm? Can they walk? Are they walking same hand, same hand, same arm, same leg? You know, there's things that I can't teach you, but there are things that, like, I'm like, okay, we can work with that student. We can, we can, you know... We can get them to a place. Um, so, yeah. You know, and, and same with voice. Like, uh, can you match pitch? Can you do things? You know, there's things that... There's basic level things that I need for, for to happen. Um, but do you have to be, you know, Kelly O'Hara coming into your college audition? No. You don't have to. And if you do sing like that, then you just need to go to... Broadway. Like, you need to pass us and go to Broadway. <laughs> right. Right. So, right. Like... Um, you know, it's like, it's not, it's not, a, yeah, it's, it's more of this, a feeling and, um, a want to, I want to study this for the next four years. Right. So being that you are a dancer, uh, first and, and that's sort of where you got, um, your start on Broadway yeah. and you just said, um, you know, we don't necessarily care that you're the best dancer in the world when you come to us. What, what are your, what are your words? Uh, what are your words for students who may not be the strongest dancer, but um, are going to be walking into a dance audition with Jacob Brent watching? <laughs> well, yes. Don't be intimidated. I know that's easier said than done. Um, you know, it's about. I, I love someone that has the energy and just ready to try it and and like even like it's you don't have to be perfect and you might not get all the steps and that's okay um it's really how you recover from that or you know um if, if you just give up then i can't there's no education that can happen right when someone just gives up so it's like as long as you're trying and you're going for it and it might not execute it the the best that's fine um but I think just that energy and that like and and having fun with it and not that fake like positive energy or that like fakeness energy that comes across you we all know that energy that's like um yeah just being a real person and like sort of owning it and being like well I messed that up but like you know sometimes it's it's that I I I can see in that person yes mess didn't get one step right but oh my gosh, I can't take my eyes off of this person. Right. They're magnetic, you know. And so uh, we can train that, but um, I can't teach that other spark thing that people have. That's great. Good words of, of wisdom. Um, so uh, one thing that we I, I wanted to touch on when we were talking about performances, but I didn't. Um, you have a pretty spectacular performing arts center there, um, and I'd love to hear all about it. We do. We have a um, is we have a, this huge building that was built in 2010. It costs 90 million dollars. They put it in. It's right across from the main building on campus. So um, they did that um, strategically to to signify to the town and the community that arts are important. And so our building, our performing arts building, is right in the center of campus. It's not down the street, around the corner, hidden somewhere. They love the arts here. Um, it, we have five theaters. Uh, we have a black box, a main stage, uh, uh, a symphony hall, um, a dance theater um, that the dance dance majors get to use, and then we have a recital hall. Wow! Um, so it's it's really it's really nice. And then we have tons of not tons. We have um, rehearsal rooms and um, dance studios. Everything is housed in the same building except for. Um, School of Music is in a, a building next door, so you would have to just you have to go next door for your voice lessons. But other than that, everything is right here in this building. So great, it's really nice. Great. So uh, we've learned a lot about JMU today, and it's probably it maybe a program that students haven't heard of before. So if they want to um, learn some more about the the BA in musical theater at JMU, um, other than going to the website, what can they do? Where can they go to find that information? Um, go to the Instagram. You can follow some follow us on Instagram. It's I think it's JMU Musical Theater. Um, it's really creative and 
uh, handle there. Um, uh, and that's a great place to get to know. Um, I sort of run that with uh, some students. I just sort of oversee it, but it's really run by students. So I think that gives a good sense of like what the life, what real life is like here for um, if you would want to come here. Um, yeah, so that and um, the website is really the, the places to go. And then I'm teaching around. I'm teaching for you. I'm teaching for... Um, I think I'm teaching at uh, Steps uh, later this summer. So. Oh, great. Yeah. Awesome. You can find, find me around. Are you back in person teaching at Steps, or are they still doing virtual this summer? I, I am. Ooh. Exciting. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> well, Jacob, crazy. thank you so much for sitting down with us again uh, and chatting about your program. I'm um, looking forward to having you uh, for the Build Your Book weekend in New York, um, Labor Day weekend. Um, I can't wait. And students will be filming, um, choreographing and filming their pre-screens, uh, for their dance pre-screens while they're there with you, which is an incredible opportunity for them. So thank you so much for doing that again. You're welcome. I can't wait to see everybody. And um, hey, best of luck, everybody, on this crazy audition circuit that's going to start up real soon. Real soon. Well, thanks so much for joining us again. We'll chat with you soon, Jacob. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. For more information on the exciting training, workshops, and masterclasses offered by The College Audition, please visit us online at www.thecollegeaudition.com or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok.